So uh, a good morning, everybody, or good day already. So I have the honor to introduce to you uh, Mr. Baudouin Bukart. Mr. Bukart is Professor of Law and Economics at the University of Ghent. Uh, he also got elected as member of the Flemish Parliament in 2009, um, thanks to the party LDD. Mr. Bukart is president of the Academic Council of the Free, Free Market and Conservative Think Tank Libra. And last but not least, Mr. Bukart is the official godfather of our movement, the Young Libertarians, and therefore he has the honor to open our academic session, so the world. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Dieter. Um, I'm surprised to be the godfather, because <laughs> the godfather has a special uh, meaning, uh, but I'm leaving uh, Monday for holiday in Sicily, and there are a lot of godfathers over there, so um, there I can see the real meaning of, of this uh, notion. Um, it's a pleasure for me to speak here um, and I'm very surprised that uh, also in the midst of uh, holidays uh, so many young people will show up for uh, summer university, that's not evident. But of course we have here this marvelous city, uh, Austin, uh, Austin uh, the queen of the beach resorts. Uh, politically also the most libertarian uh, city of Flanders and that's thanks to uh, Jean-Marie, uh, Jean-Marie de Decker, uh, the most libertarian voice, uh, outstanding libertarian voice in Belgian politics, uh, is one of the few libertarians who was able to create a popular movement and to got uh, people elected like me in the parliament, so that's uh, uh, something for which we ought to be very grateful to him, that he brought uh, libertarian thinking on the political uh, stage. In the program, uh, my speech, the, the title of my speech is The History of Libertarianism. Um, I changed it uh, somewhat uh, because at if I remember well, in uh, April we had a, um, there was an event of the Young Libertarians. Uh, the name change. Uh, the name change. Yeah. The? the name change. change. The name change. Okay, it was a name change. And on that occasion I gave a speech uh, on the evolution of uh, liberal libertarian thinking in Belgium, Flanders, uh, 19th century, Verhofstadt, and so on. Um, and I don't think it's uh, useful to repeat that over here and to bring something new. Now, what I, uh, I chose is a subject I may already research on, and that is uh, the evolution of um, the medieval cities medieval cities. I published on that and I sent the article uh, to uh, Yuri and uh, Yuri promised me to send it to all the participants of this uh, summer uh, university. Um, why uh, did I uh, take this? Uh, it's of course not only for historical reasons, it's uh, historically a very interesting subject, but it's also uh, to show that uh, the uh, libertarianism has a very remote roots in uh, European history, and especially Flanders, uh, with its tradition of uh, city culture, urban culture, uh, has played also a quite important role in uh, this. Uh, classical liberalism, uh, the birth of classical liberalism as a uh, ideology, has to be situated, uh, I think, in the 17th century in England uh, with uh, thinkers like uh, John Locke, uh, the French Revolution, the 19th century laissez-faireism, that is uh, when uh, libertarianism, classical liberalism got its full uh, development as a uh, tradition, as an int intellectual uh, tradition, but uh, this tradition did not fell from heaven. Uh, there were a lot of tendencies in uh, European history uh, which were uh, in fact leading to uh, liberal uh, thinking, to liberal uh, uh, liberal institutions like li li uh, limited government constitutions and so on. And uh, we call that proto-liberal uh, 
movements, proto-liberal institutions. And they were not explicitly liberal by intent, but they have contributed to the formation of uh, classical liberal, liberal thinking. And uh, this uh, and the, 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 the medieval cities, the, the evolution of the medieval cities is certainly uh, a, a very important element in the growth and the evolution of the of classical liberal uh, thinking. And we are also on a summer university, uh, uh, university that means that you take some distance from uh, current uh, political problems um, and you open your mind for some uh, deeper reflection. And um, also the next speaker is uh, a very uh, philosophical, uh, has a very philosophical approach. Uh, I think uh, university, some university is a um, excellent occasion for uh, somewhat more distanced and uh, deeper reflection on um, political and ideological uh, topics. Now, um, come to my uh, subject. Um, I don't know how far your uh, historical knowledge uh, reaches, but you certainly know that uh, uh, city life in uh, Europe uh, emerged uh, emerged in the 11th century. Uh, before the 11th century, uh, city life in Europe was very poor. Um, the cities were very small, uh, 500,000 inhabitants, um, and they were mostly uh, administrative centers. Um, for instance, uh, there were the see, uh, as they called it in English, of a bishop, uh, and the bishop had his, some uh, administrative staff, uh, or there was a king with a very uh, small uh, administration, but for the rest the cities were very poor. And uh, that was, of course, linked to the very unstable uh, situation in Europe before the uh, before the year 1000. Uh, Europe was uh, threatened by constant uh, warfare. The warfare uh, had uh, external uh, uh, causes. We had the invasions of the Normans from Norway. Um, uh, they were quite violent, uh, very violent people. Uh, they had a kind of uh, elite troops, the Bersakir, uh, who were very uh, trained in killing. So. Uh, talking about Norway, uh, but there's a long history. Um, there were the invasions of the Saracens, the Saracens in the Mediterranean uh, area. The Saracens were very specialized in taking slaves. For instance, the Italian coast was during years and years terrorized by Saracens uh, taking children and, and women. Uh, and so um, they controlled the Mediterranean, the, uh, the Mediterranean. And then from the east we had the Hungarians who were constantly invading. So Western Europe was threatened from three sides uh, from outside then. And then internally uh, there was uh, also due to this warfare uh, chaos, uh, enormous chaos. Uh, there was no political authority. Uh, there was constantly infighting between uh, lords, feudal uh, lords. That was somewhat the situation in uh, before uh, the 11th century. And that, of course, uh, not an, 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 an uh, environment which is uh, conducive to uh, economic development, economic development which requires uh, a uh, a uh, context of peace. Uh, economics is linked with peace, uh, uh, trade, production, uh, therefore you need uh, peace and not a constant uh, warfare. So that was somewhat the situation. Now what we see uh, in the 11th century, a spectacular growth of the cities. Uh, I have uh, some figures there in the paper. Uh, for instance, uh, Berman, Harold Berman, uh, a very interesting uh, historian. Uh, who he wrote the book Law and Revolution, in which he traces somewhat the evolution in the Middle Ages. Uh, um, and uh, Berman uh, uh, estimates that in 1050, about 1% of the population in Europe lived in cities, and in 
1200, 150 years later, it was already 10%. So it, it was an enormous growth. You have always to remember that in an agricultural society, uh, the people living in the city do not produce agricultural products. That means agriculture, agriculture has to be developed uh, very well in order to maintain a population which is not involved in agriculture production. So, uh, so city, uh, a large city population is not evident in a rather primitive agriculture uh, environment. Paris uh, had uh, 20,000 people, uh, inhabitants in 1050, 110,000 in 1200. Uh, Col uh, Colonia had uh, 10 uh, in 1050, 21,000 in 1200, 50,000. So you see a steady growth. Uh, if you look to Flanders, or Flanders, the county of Flanders, not present Flanders, um, the county of Flanders, that's east and west uh, Flanders and the north of France, that is the county of uh, Flanders, the real Flemish, if you cross the Skeld, you're in uh, the Holy Roman Empire, uh, but Flanders is somewhat more libertarian in uh, mentality. Um, but in Flanders you had cities like Ghent 50,000, Bruges uh, 40,000, and Ypres, which was the third uh, most important city in uh, Flanders, uh, 30,000. So that was in a very small area. Hmm? Uh, it is estimated that about one-third of the population in uh, Flanders lived in cities, urban population, which was uh, extremely uh, elevated for uh, that time. That, uh, Flanders and north of Italy were the most urbanized areas in the uh, Middle Ages. There are, uh, so that, that is an, a trend, uh, a very clear trend in the, in, 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 um, the, the move of the population. Now, what are the causes? Uh, there are, of course, a lot of economic causes uh, for this uh, urban explosion, as I, if I can call it like that. First, uh, there was an expansion of trade. Um, in the uh, 11th century, uh, trade uh, exploded, really. And did, this was the result of uh, the opening of the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, the Saracens were repelled, uh, were cleared, and that meant that the trade networks which you had uh, with uh, Germany, England, uh, France, uh, the northern trade network and the Mediterranean trade network were linked. So you got a very large trade network throughout Europe. And that was because the Mediterranean was uh, open. So um, also uh, the Normans were repelled or settled. Uh, Normandy was given to the Normans. Uh, um, and then also the Hungarians, uh, the peace was made with the Hungarians. So you got also much less uh, war, which is of course conducive for uh, trade. A uh, second factor was the rise of agricultural productivity. In the 11th century, uh, we see the introduction of the plows, a plow, which, is, which increases a lot of uh, the agricultural productivity. You had better techniques with uh, changing uh, the plots. Uh, uh, I forgot the English name for, for that. The, what? Crop rotation, yeah. Uh, so uh, agricultural productivity uh, was rising, and then also you got uh, better uh, technology, uh, better weaving techniques, uh, the, the new machines for weaving were introduced, and they would be used until the uh, 18th century when the new, uh, the Mule Jenny, which was taken by Ghent. Uh, Guy uh, Lievenbau was from England, uh, so the Dutch, the, the Ghent Industrial Revolution was based on, in fact, intellectual theft. Okay, but that's uh, an excursion. So that that are uh, clear economic causes uh, for uh, this uh, urban urban uh, revolution. But these uh, technological uh, economic. Uh, Causes do not explain the specific political shape of the cities. If you look, for instance, uh, I, I will come back to that, but the cities evolved as um, nearly independent 
self-ruling communities.